Hello, my name is Brandon Stebbins, and I'll be doing my capstone presentation on Jones Lang LaSalle, better known as JLL. Bit of company information uh, JLL is a Fortune 500 company. They operate within the real estate and investment management industry. They're in over 80 countries and have over 93,000 employees. Uh, they do about $18 billion in total revenue, of which $7.1 billion is fee revenue. JLO can trace its roots back all the way to 1760 with the founding of Jones Lang Wooten. And then in 1968, LaSalle Partners was formed. In 1999, the two companies merged, and this became the JLL that we know today. And then in 2019, JLL acquired HFF, which was the eighth largest real estate firm at the time. JLL has six different business segments. Uh, this includes leasing, capital markets, property and facility management, project and development services, advisory, consulting, and other, and the SAL. Uh, leasing comes in two forms, agency leasing and tenant representation. Um, agency leasing is JLL acting on behalf of property owners, and tenant representation is JLL acting on behalf of tenants. Um, basically, JLL will negotiate different lease terms, such as um, lease pricing or uh, space requirements. Uh, capital markets have a variety of services, uh, including debt placement, equity placement, funds advisory, investment sales and acquisition, loan sales and loan servicing. Uh, property and facility management, that is when there are JLL representatives to do on-site services with the client. This is on the client's uh, land. Uh, these services can range anywhere from maintenance to renovations or to supplies replenishment. Uh, project and development services, these are um, consulting, design, management, and uh, build services to tenants of lease space. Uh, this is typically uh, renovations or design for renovations. Um, advisory consulting and other. Um, this is consulting services um, in areas like technology, implementation, and optimization, mergers and acquisitions, asset management, uh, workplace solutions, location advisory, and industry research. And then finally, uh, LaSalle, which is the investment branch of the business. Um, this branch uh, manages real estate funds and has uh, $67.6 .6 billion of assets under management. There are four main competitors of JLL. The first is CBRE, which is JLL's uh, biggest competitor and also the largest real estate firm. The second largest is JLL. The third is Cushman and Wakefield, Newmark Knight Frank, and then Colliers International. Um, there are three political factors that can impact JLL's business. These are contract law, corporate taxes, and real estate taxes. Contract law plays a big part in JLL's business because JLL will sign leases or negotiate leases and the way that the contract law is written can impact that. JLL also signs contracts with their suppliers and their clients in terms of business. So these laws changing uh, can impact that. And then corporate taxes and real estate taxes can impact this because if a client doesn't want to enter, enter a certain certain market then uh, due to taxes then they won't go there and it may be out of JLL's reach. Um, there are two economic factors. These are employment and the market value of land. Um, employment is a big part of the business because um, the more employees you have or the more employees that there are within a municipality then the higher the need is for real estate services. Market value of land is uh, important to JLL because uh, JLL typically charges a percentage fee. And so therefore, if the lease is um, high, then the percentage will result in higher revenue for JLL. 
Um, Sociocultural, as I mentioned, JLL is an international company. And uh, with each country having a different set of standards and norms, JLL needs to be conscious of this uh, in terms of how they operate in the different countries. Um, technology, JLL is a technology-centric company. Um, they try and implement technology in all areas of their businesses. Um, environmental, um, buildings produce a lot of emissions and waste. And so um, JLL's goals uh, fall in line with trying to reduce the waste and emissions and making clients' buildings greener and making their own occupied buildings greener. And then finally, legal. This includes contract law, as I mentioned before, and real estate-specific laws such as building codes. Uh, Porter's Five Forces. Um, Rivalry among existing competitors is fairly high within the industry. Um, as I mentioned, there are several uh, large companies seeking business within this area. And um, customers typically consider price and value. And it's not for, for someone who is looking for new real estate services, it's not hard to change. Um, the power of buyers is medium. Um, in some circumstances, it can be high, and in other circumstances, it can be low. So um, there are times where uh, a customer may not be able to switch real estate companies because of the services that they require. Um, on the other hand, if they are looking for a new real estate firm to do business uh, and there aren't certain ties to the building, then it can be very low. Um, the threat of new entrants is pretty low. Um, the, as I mentioned, these companies have been around for a long time and have a strong foothold within the industry. Um, the threat of substitutes is fairly low. Um, there really isn't too many ways to find an alternative for real estate services. And then the bargaining power of suppliers is fairly low. Um, JLL has a variety of suppliers to choose from, and if uh, one isn't able to provide, then there will be another one that will be able to. Um, a SWOT analysis. Um, there are three strengths of JLL. This is buying power, technology capabilities, and their supplier network. Um, JLL's entire business is kind of uh, built on buying power. Because JLL is so large, they're able to sign contracts with vendors uh, and they're able to get good deals on prices and then turn it around and uh, supply it to their customers. Um, JLL is very strong in the technology area and they try and implement technology wherever they can. And then as I mentioned, um, their supplier network, um, there's no bottlenecks within their supplier network because they can typically choose from a variety of vendors to provide the same products or services. Um, weaknesses are slim margins. Um, JLL, as I mentioned, they will um, purchase from vendors and then turn around and sell it at not a super high markup and therefore this leads to a small profit margin. So for seeking outside help uh, to get a job done, uh, the margins are very small. Um, training and safety costs uh, when you're occupying buildings and renovating there are a number of uh, safety risks and therefore uh, there's a high cost to keep employees safe and then reliance on building occupancy uh, if there's no people in the building there's really not much for jll to do um, opportunities are co-working spaces uh, changing tech landscape and repurposing buildings uh, co-working spaces to seem to be a new style of real estate where you can lease space on desks and not uh, floors. Um, as I mentioned, JLL is strong in the technology area, and so therefore, as it changes, they are ahead of the curve when it comes to technology. And then repurposing old buildings. Um, this includes a lot of empty storage facilities or um, empty manufacturing facilities. And then threats are working from home, co-working, and this COVID-19 pandemic. Um, if there aren't people within an office, um, JLL doesn't have a lot to provide for the at-home worker. Um, co-working is a threat because there are a lot of established uh, co-working branches now. 
uh, and JOL hasn't moved into the space yet. And then COVID-19, because obviously with a lot of businesses closing, um, JLL isn't able to operate uh, normally in providing services since nobody there is working. Um, quick video analysis. JLL has a very good culture. They're very open to new employees, and this gives them a sustainable competitive advantage. Um, their knowledge within the real estate industry is very high quality, um, but it is not rare due to the other real estate firms having similar knowledge and data. And then capital, um, same thing, um, the CBRE also has a lot of capital. JLL strategy is diversification. As I mentioned, there are six different business segments. Um, there are also operating in over 80 countries. So this is considered a product market diversification strategy because of the variety of business, businesses and the different locations. Um, they are also in related diversification because the six segments uh, use similar resources and get different outputs. Um, the company structure is pretty hierarchical, but with that being said, there's a lot of decentralized business uh, decision making. Um, because it's so large, it kind of has to be hierarchical in order to function. However, when you're providing customized client services, you sort of need discretion to, uh, you know, fulfill the customer's needs as best as possible. Um, and they are also quite ambidextrous organization. Um, because they typically are on the cutting edge of trends and technology, and they're able to change uh, as the times change. Um, their corporate social responsibility. Every year they put out a global sustainability report, which is the same thing as a CSR report. Um, there are four main sections that they focus on. These are the clients, the people, workplaces, and communities. Um, the clients are at the center of everything JLL does, and so they try to serve the client as best as possible. Um, the people within the firm are what makes the firm um, cutting edge. The workplaces are the areas in which they are occupying and working in, and they try and do community involvement, and they will give employees time off to volunteer. Uh, within this uh, global sustainability report, they provide a target, a status update, notes, and a performance review. And this is to provide transparency. So the strategic issue of JLL is how will they adapt to a remote working environment? Um, even beyond the COVID-19 pandemic, working from home is a trend that we're seeing more and more. And so as more employees are working from home, um, you know, companies are saving money by not uh, having employees in the office. And so JLL needs to figure out how to continue to best serve their clients, even though the occupancy is decreasing. And the recommendation is to expand services to at-home workers through their employers. Um, JLL can do a variety of things, such as outfitting a home office or um, you know, providing maintenance or technology um, technology implementation for the home worker. Um, as we're all learning to work from home now, we're realizing that there are a variety of resources we don't have, such as perhaps high-speed internet or monitors or various AV equipment or audio equipment. And so I think JLL has an opportunity here to provide the same services that they would uh, within an office, but to the at-home worker. And then this is my work cited page. Uh, thank you for watching my presentation, and uh, this class has been a pleasure. Thanks.